this. So we then upload it to YouTube. Demo, you hear me? Yep. Okay, so here's the community. Guys, uh, please welcome Demo. Everyone. He's the CEO of uh, Infinite X Labs and uh, EOS Bulgaria. So, uh, Demo, please tell us all about uh, Infinite X Labs. What are you guys doing? And uh, it's great to have you here. Go on. Awesome. Thank you, Herman, for having me. And I promise that the next time I'm part of the UC Israel Meetup, I'm going to be in Tel Aviv. Uh, yeah, so I'm a CEO and founder at Infinite X Labs. We are an outsourcing company uh, providing blockchain services on Ethereum and EOS. Uh, very soon, we are going to include in our portfolio Hyperledger and Colza. And the reason for that is we want to be blockchain agnostic and not just um, be with just one network. As uh, Herman said, I'm actually founder of Use Bulgaria, where we are building the community, the use community, not only in Bulgaria, but in this part of Europe. Because right now, uh, you're, you're probably familiar that we have very big Chinese communities and uh, the communities uh, in the USA are very big. But in this part of Europe, uh, in Bulgaria and the countries around Bulgaria, I can, I can say that there isn't any use community. And I think we are already changing that. And we are hoping for um, the next year to have very, very big community here in Balkans. Um, and yeah, I'm today going to talk about EOS versus Ethereum on the developer's perspective. I have a presentation, so I will share my screen so you can see it. Let so me see this where is the... very useful because you know here in, the, in Israel we have a, like a very large Ethereum builder community, and um, mm -hmm. uh, we haven't been yet kind of able to convey directly. What are the kind of the difference of developing on EOS versus developing on Ethereum? So I think this is going to be a very insightful uh, presentation for the developers in the, in the local scene. I see. Yeah, so um, the presentation, there isn't a lot uh, in it. I'm going to speak most of the time. Uh, let me just start. So uh, I know this is a news meetup, but I need to ask, is there any Ethereum developers in the audience? <laughs> just raise your hand. Raise your hand. Uh, no? Okay. Well, Alex was considering developing Ethereum, but I think, we, I think I've steered him in, uh, into that direction. <laughs> okay. No worries. Yeah, be so. Sure, be sure that a lot of Ethereum developers will be <laughs> watching this. Awesome. Yes, so from my side, uh, let me tell you more about myself. Uh, I'm in the crypto space since the summer of 2017. And I started developing on Ethereum, I think, at the end of September 2017, the beginning of October. So um, this is the Ethereum. And I have, I've been in the youth community since the beginning in 2018 around February. So I've been developing on use since then and actually one of the first uh, use developer tutorials uh, was created by me. And I think if you type on Google use development tutorials, probably we are going to be um, on the first page. So I have, I have experience in developing in the bond networks and what I'm going to talk today is uh, my perspective from uh, as a developer, um, not as so much as a business owner and as a person who is looking also at the business side of that. So um, I'm going to talk about a few things. Um, the first probably is going to be very interesting is the war of the maximalists. Um, I'm going to talk about the developer reality, what is uh, actually for a developer in the, block, the blockchain ecosystem, what they need to have and what is important for them. And after that, I'm going to cover the small contracts and the development tools both on EOS and Ethereum so we can have like a comparison. 
So uh, as you probably know, we have lots of discussion and there is lots of topic between what is use, what is Ethereum, and there is lots of comparison on the on the internet. And it's okay to have them. Uh, it's okay to have a place where we can compare two networks. Uh, the problem is that most of these articles are written either by uh, Ethereum developers or by use developers. The problem with that is if you want to have a rational comparison between EOS and Ethereum, first, you don't, you don't listen to Ethereum maximalists talking about EOS because everything they're going to say is it, it will be against the EOS network. And they actually, most of the Ethereum developers don't actually understand the difference between EOS and EOSIO. And this is a problem. Um, and you, you can actually see the same for uh, the EOS maximalists. When they, are top, they when they want to compare use to Ethereum. We have the same problem where everyone is trying to get you on their network and no one is actually giving you like a real rational uh, comparison between the both networks. And I'm always saying to, um, to people I, I, I'm meeting that the best way to actually have a rational comparison is to, is to listen to people who have real experience in both network and they're actually blockchain agnostic. Because when we, t when we are talking about blockchain, we need to first consider the business side because most of the time, even that you want your DAP to be on Ethereum, this, this that doesn't mean that it's going to be the best option for your business in the long term. And this is something very important because if you have the same app on EOS and Ethereum, in the long term, uh, if you're looking for performance and you're looking to reduce costs, Ethereum probably won't provide that because you, for example, in Ethereum you have fees and the whole user experience is just really crazy um, on Ethereum. And so this is like, this is really important. So take that in mind. And so what is actually the reality for the developers? So each developer, so first there isn't a lot of uh, blockchain developers that are developing bots on EOS and Ethereum. And there is a reason for that. Uh, most of the Ethereum developers don't like EOS at all. Uh, they think it's centralized. Um, and we have the same from the, from the use developers, they think that Ethereum cannot actually bring any value to the table, and you can you you cannot actually find developers developing on the blockchain. And another thing for the blockchain developers is actually that when you are developing a DApp, you need to have everything you need as um, as tools. Um, you need to have like a solid technology, solid blockchain technology base that can actually help you to create uh, the functionalities easier. And if you don't have that, it's really hard and it's really time consuming for developers. And uh, in the long term, when you want to implement a simple functionality on Ethereum, and let's say you need a week for that, most of the time you need just like an hour or two to do that on use. And if you if you take a look on that from business perspective, then you will see that um, in this case, use is way better than um, than Ethereum. So um, I'm going to talk about the smart contracts, and this is really important because um, there is three. I can say that there are three important stuff uh, when we are talking about smart contracts, and this is the structure, the programming languages, and the built-in features that we are receiving. So, on, th on Ethereum perspective, um, the contracts um, are very simple. Uh, you don't have a lot of um, different functions. Uh, you don't have uh, a lot of um, 
different types of variables and you you can you can develop very easily um demo contracts or something simple uh however when we are talking about very complex application um very big gaps uh this is where it comes really hard to to actually achieve what you want to do and for example <coughs> sorry let's say <coughs> let's say you have a dap uh, which contain 10 smart contracts if you want to have updatable smart contracts on ethereum uh you need for each of these 10 smart contracts uh one one proxy which is another contract and you have another smart contract uh which is the interface so actually in the end for 10 smart contracts you have 30 smart contracts that you need to deploy on the network so you can actually uh update them and when you have a very complex uh product structure it's really hard to actually maintain the whole structure and to easily upgrade it or to um fix different kind of things uh, the way I think about use is that uh, there is they they are using C plus plus and um, you're probably familiar with uh, how the compiler works on C plus plus and actually you can combine all of your um, use smart contracts into one and you can deploy we 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 are calling calling it the master's contract that you can deploy on the, on the network. And at the end, when we're talking about control structure, uh, it's really, I think, uses way much better because you can easily create a lot of complex uh, structures. Um, another thing is the programming language. And I mean, even if we do not talk about EOS or C++, Solidity is probably the most awful uh, blockchain language uh it's it's a language that is currently being developed uh there's lots of things that are missing in the language for example uh decimal point um and it's really hard to develop on solidity because it, it's easy to develop like a simple functionality but when you need to develop like really serious and complex functionality it's really hard and um friends of mine um, needed to develop a formula uh, that was containing some integrals. It was a really complex formula. And to develop that on Solidity, where you don't have any decimal point, was a total disaster. Uh, it took him, I think, like about three weeks. And at the end, uh, they, they, they just said that the formula need to be changed because it cannot be implemented uh, on Solid. Uh, however, on other side, on C++, the great thing about it is that we have lots of resources. Um, there is lots of tutorials about, uh, about C++ and it's really easy to develop on C++ in my opinion. Um, and I think this is very important for uh, developers that are coming from other languages because if you're a C-sharp developer or if you have already experienced C++, this is a very big uh, advantage for you. Another thing which is very important for the smart contracts is actually the built-in features. Um, and on Ethereum, we don't have a lot of them. We have some, but we for co comparison with uh, EOS, we have, on EOS we have accounts, we have permissions, and I think the permissions, the permissions on EOS are one of the best things that uh, the network have, the protocol have, because uh, you can build very complex structures um, with the permissions on EOS, which you can achieve that on uh, Ethereum, and it's really hard to, Achieve if you want to do something like that. Um, another important thing when we are talking about development of blockchain apps um, is actually the development tools. And without development tools, um, 
I mean, every developer is using some kind of tools or frameworks or libraries. And the whole thing is that when you want to develop dApps in, in a manner that is fast, um, without time consuming, you need to have all the tools uh, you need. Um, the problem with tools right now is that there isn't a lot of development tools. Uh, and and it, that's okay because the network is just like a uh, year, over a year um, old. With comparison to Ethereum, uh, Ethereum, I think it was over four years, around five years. And we have a lot of tools that are currently being developed or are already developed for Ethereum. And it's really, most of the time, um, the dev tools are born when we need them. And as I said, uh, Ethereum is, is on the market for over four years. And for that time, we have seen lots of, for example, the, one of the best, uh, one of the famous uh, frameworks for Ethereum is Truffle. And we have Ethereum which is like a similar framework to Truffle but it provides things that at the time Truffle didn't provide to the developer community. Another thing, as I said already, is that Ethereum has more dev tools than use. Uh, this is normal. The Ethereum, is, uh, the Ethereum network is more um, older than use. However, the great thing about use is actually the community. Um, and USR is developing really fast. And just for one year, uh, after September 23rd, uh, we're going to have new version of US, which is going to be 12 times faster than the previous one. And regarding the tools that we are currently seeing on the USR network, um, I mean, liquid apps are an example of how fast the network is developing. And I think in a year from now, uh, use is going to be way much in the game uh, compared to Ethereum when we talk on the developer side. And I think, yeah, my personal opinion uh, is that on use, you can develop dApps way much easier. Um, it's really easy to actually um, understand the whole concept, uh, which, for example, on Ethereum is really hard. And I think if you're a new blockchain developer, you're just starting, probably the use is the place, place to start. Um, and the reason for that is really the, the way of implementing the functionality in the smart contracts, it's, it's very similar to uh, if you want to develop, let's say, a C++ game, or it's very closer to the actual software development we have, because probably you all know that most of the time, blockchain development is not the same as um, software development. Yeah. Um, that's all for me. Um, if you have any questions, I'm really happy to answer them. So Dimo, could you help? Could you give us some examples of, uh, maybe just give us one example of a, a large project that you built in Ethereum and one that you built on EOS and uh, how did the, the two compare in terms of the development time, complications and, uh, and so on? Mm, I cannot say, yeah. So uh, on Ethereum, so the project that I developed on Ethereum uh, from my previous company, um, from me fintech swaps, I cannot say uh, do NDAs, but I think you're probably familiar with uh, Arxum. Or is anyone familiar with Arxum here? No, we don't know it, but you can explain it briefly. Yeah. Uh, so Arxum uh, started, so I just wanted to say that Arxum is right now switching to use. Uh, they recently get something from the, uh, the German venture capital. I think it was Fin AG, uh, FinLab. 
And so um, Arxum is developing a product that is connected to the supply chain of, I'm not very familiar right now uh, at what stage they are because the last time I worked on the project was uh, around the summer last year. But uh, what I developed on that time is that they have beer coasters and we needed to create the whole connection between the smart contract, the, the IoT devices, and the whole supply chain logic where you have the manufacturer, you have the, uh, you have the consumer, which were, um, which were the users. So what we needed to create was the whole cycle where you can order a beer coaster with your name um, uh, and your uh, address. Um, and this is, going, this is printed by machine where you have like a laser and it's printing your name and the logo on the beer coaster. And after that, this can be received as a gift to uh, can be sent to your address. So this was the whole logic about um, Arxium. There is another project, uh, RECI, uh, that they are, they're a, so they're a company that is specializing in AI and scientific research. Let's say if you want to create a new scientific research on Elon, Elon Musk, you can, once you have ready, once it's already written, you can add it in their platform and they're going to show you all, all of the similar um, articles or videos that are in some way similar to your, um, uh, your research. And what they wanted to achieve uh, was actually to create a whole ecosystem where you can add your scientific research and receive some tokens. Um, and they want to create the whole token economics. The problem with that was that they needed to regulate uh, the price. So if you have, um, you need, so we needed to create like inflation and deflation uh, in some part parts when the token was too high or too low. And I think was that we needed to tax all of the users each month, like a certain percentage so we can actually have uh, uh, them to not actually just stay with the token and not use it uh, in the platform. Uh, so these are, these are two of the projects on Ethereum uh, I was part of. Um, in developing process. On the, on the use of the problem with US is that I cannot say much because uh, most of the projects are not yet uh, public. Uh, one of the projects that is right now public and we can say about it is actually the soft token. I'm not sure if I've heard about it. SOV, uh, right? Sorry? The SOV token. Yeah, uh, it's the, the first self-regulated token on the US and it, it, it started like an experiment, but the great thing about the soft token and the whole concept um, first is the first uh, locked token on the US and the whole idea of uh, have that concept to lock the contracts and everything they're planning, it's really, I think, I think in, in the months that are coming, uh, they can actually bring a new standard for use dApps to actually uh, all of us we need to follow. Because right now, nobody cares uh, if the contracts on the use network are immutable or immutable. And for them, we did uh, the audit of token small contracts. And yeah, this is, this is actually the project. Uh, I really can't say much about the others. Okay. Uh, well, Dimo, that was awesome. Thank you very much. How can people how can people contact you if they want you to develop something for you? Yeah, I think I have so yeah. Can you see it? Yep. Okay.
Oh, yeah, you can you can contact me on my email or you can find me on Twitter. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can find me of all of the social networks. Just uh, just type my name. Okay, no there. Thank you very much, Timo. You were great. Uh, uh, let's let's catch up later, mate. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you for having me. I'm saying hi. I'm saying hi. Ah, okay. Thank you. Bye, Timo. Thank you.